Hi, my name is Lynette Owens and I'm the president of Lyrical Opera Theatre. We're starting a new tradition today called Lyrical Logs, which is video recording of some of the different aspects of our opera company so that you can become familiar with us in a more kind of behind the scenes way. We're going to be interviewing singers and we're also going to be showing you some of the processes that we go through in order to produce our operas. One of the questions that I get asked a lot is why do you only produce one opera per year? And the answer to that is that we are on the cutting edge of technology. We use new and innovative techniques in the operatic world to produce our operas. And for many of you, um, you're already familiar with it when you go to musical theater. In fact, it's so common that you don't even know that it doesn't exist in the opera operatic world and that is full orchestral accompaniment music tracks. When you go to musical theater most often these days that's what you're going to hear which the singers sing to. Um, in opera uh, those kind of tracks have, have existed for many years for for example arias which are solos in operas, duets, quartets, but for entire operas it's brand new to the operatic world, so uh, we actually produce those, which means we take, we use full orchestral accompaniment um, found in an orchestral score like this. We put in every single note of every single instrument, every single tempo, every single uh, dynamic which are your pianos and your fortes or your louds and your softs and every single style marker for an entire opera and in this particular case um, it's 300 no it's 464 pages so it takes a lot of time and um, my first opera was Madama Butterfly uh, that one took me a year and a half because I had so much um, information to learn. It was a huge, huge learning curve. Um, I've gotten it down so it's about six months, but um, I'm going to show you what that's like to do, hoping and praying that some other people out there will actually also learn how to do this so that we have um, these kind of tracks available for like every opera out there for the entire world. So here we go. <laughs> Okay, so this is the orchestral score for Falstaff. Um, I don't know how closely this camera can zoom in, but um, you see here like over to the sides, it tells you the kind of instruments at the top. It says flute um, and uh, they're in Italian, of course, because this is an Italian um, opera. We have flute, ottavino, sorry, Flauto, which is flute, Ottavino, which is the piccolo, um, the oboe, which is the oboe. We have a, a clarinetti, which means clarinet. And if you look below, it says in do. And um, you actually have to watch that really closely because um, sometimes the clarinets are in C. Uh, flat, which um, they use the solfege, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. Um, you have to watch that because it's oftentimes a different key than the rest of the instruments are in, and you're going to have a different key signature for the clarinets. The uh, fagotti are the bassoons. Um, you have to watch their clefs. Uh, Verdi has used bass clef for the uh, bassoons quite a lot, um, but some of the other orchestral scores, the fagot, they go into the um, what's called the tenor clef, clef quite a lot. Um, then below that we have the corni, which are the French horns, and you see you have two staves for the corni. One is in mi, um, so if you think of do, re, mi, and the other one is in do. So, like for example, in the mi one, um, I have to put in those notes, which you can see, and then I have to transpose 
Um, I actually, with the um, French horns, I put those notes in an octave lower. And then for me, I have to transpose up uh, four steps, which is four half steps. So I put the notes in first like they are written right there, and then I transpose them up four half steps. Um, then we have um, below that the um, trombe, which is the trumpets, and those are in do, but sometimes those are also in um, fa, um, and in fact quite commonly in fa. So with those, um, they are in treble clef, and I put those in exactly as they're written. Um, if it says in fa, for example, I have to then transpose it up five full steps. Um, the trombones are those tromboni, they're in bass clef, which is great. Then we have the timpani, the gran casa is a concert uh, bass drum. Then we have the different characters, and below that we have violins, violas, um, we have the cellos, and we have basses on the bottom staff. And so that's what an orchestral score looks like. What I do is, for example, um, I just start at the top with the flutes here. I, uh, I use a program, I'm going up to my computer now, called Mixcraft. And let's see if this camera can focus on that. It's called Mixcraft. My first two um, tracks are audio tracks. Sorry. And in fact, um, if you want to hear what the audio tracks are, I put the audio tracks of operas of, that have already been recorded um, at the top so that I, I call them my example tracks. Um, I can tell like tempos from them because even though the tempos are written in the score, um, I try to pay attention to the tempos. For example, um, you can see right here my tempo says 116 and if you look down here in the score you're going to see right here uh, Verdi wrote Allegro Vivace 116 um, quarter notes per minute so I do try to pay attention to composers tempos in some cases there are traditions that I've got to take it out of tempo um, or sometimes it's just simply too fast or too slow or something like that and through the years people have gotten to know that and they do different tempos um, so I use these example tracks up here um, to show me things like that but so for example the top one is um, it's by uh, conducted by Claudio Abado and it sounds like this if I hit play it sounds like this Oops, let's go back to the beginning. That's too low. So I used um, Claudio Bado's conducting. It also has Bryn Terfel on it for that one. I also, um, I love to uh, use Arturo Toscanini's tracks um, because he's sometimes like if it says 116, he's exactly on 116. I, um, so I also use his tracks as example tracks so that I have two to compare them to. Um, by doing this also, I know, I actually know that the, the tracks are singable. So here's an example of what um, Toscanini sounds like. <laughs> So, as I told you, um, I also put in, as you saw down here, the orchestral instruments. You see one right there, that's the flute. And if you look up here, my first track right there is a virtual instrument, flute. And um, when I click on that, um, you can go down here. 
those are the notes that I put in myself. You can just draw those notes in and it's actually faster to just draw them in than it is to um, to play it on like a keyboard instrument. Um, so that I can, uh, for example, in the score, you can see you can see down here in the score you have um, quarter notes followed by sixteenth notes that actually have staccato on them. So how do you make staccato? You actually do that by making the notes shorter. So instead of taking up a full um, quarter or full sixteenth note, which it would be from here to here, it's an eighth note, so it only takes, uh, or it's a thirty-second note, so it's a lot shorter than a quarter. In fact, if I plus that out, you'll see that more clearly. So this is my quarter note, and these are sixteenth notes, but they're staccato, so they're actually shorter. Um, and this is what that flute looks like. I also have to put in all of the um, dynamics. So there is an accent on the first note, and you see it's gone up to make the accent, and then I've shaped it so uh, because um, there's no instrument. In fact, it doesn't sound human if you hold something for the um, same dynamic. So I accent it by, um, I put the um, dynamic all the way down. Um, then as if I'm blowing into my instrument, the dynamic goes up. It goes up pretty far, then drops down a bit so that it's an accent and then back up. And so I shape, these are called um, envelopes. I shape every single one of those envelopes. So here's what the flute sounds like right there. All right, and you see if I go down, um, there's every single, there's piccolo is next. This is what my piccolo sounds like. Then there's oboe. Then there is, and you see I just do a little bit at a time. Sometimes I do several measures, which you can see this next one, it just made sense for my clarinets to go several measures. I'll, I'll make that smaller so you can see. So they go out several measures. I also coordinate, you see up here we have measure numbers. I also coordinate that to the score. You see how I've gone in here and I've measured, I've written down my measure numbers in the score. So you see down here, clarinets. It just made sense for them to go out for several measures. So that's what I did here with my clarinets. And this is what my clarinets sound like. And I'll stop that. The next instrument down, just like in the orchestral score, is bassoon. Bassoon is and you see all of those dynamics in that track all right I'm stopping that then we have French horns French horns sound like this we have trumpets I'm gonna scroll down just a little bit Trumpets sound like this. Oops, I did the wrong thing, sorry about that. Trumpets sound like this. Uh, the next one down is tuba. Oh no, sorry, that was trombones that I just played. We have tuba. We have timpani is next. We have a timpani roll. We have um, our, our orchestral strings, and sometimes I put these in all together, and sometimes it depends on um, what the melody is like. Sometimes you have to single out an instrument and put it in, um, but I do, generally do two tracks of orchestral strings. So I put them in, they sound like this. And if you look down here at, this is what it looks like in the MIDI. All of them are in there in this one. Like I said, not always do I have it this way, but um, all right. And then we have another track just like that. And then we have our pizzicato strings. And in this case, there is no pizzicato right here. So 
Um, by the way, down here in the MIDI, usually what I do is I put it in, it's called quantized, which means exact. And then I have a little function here. You see I have a thing that I can um, humanize or I can transpose, like um, for some of my instruments, for example, um, French horns and trumpets, I often have to transpose things. Um, but humanize makes it sound like it's a real orchestra. If you have things that are exactly put in like a computer, um, that's what you have is a computer sound. So um, I tell it how much to humanize it by. Um, and um, this is what everything sounds like when they're all played together. That's the process I go through. It starts out with this, the orchestral score, and you can see there are, you know, sometimes it, it, it will take me an hour per page because it's a lot of notes. It's a lot of notes, and I'm very particular about it all. Sometimes not that much, maybe a half hour or so. Um, and it takes an extreme amount of skill and knowledge about music. I happened to play um, in orchestras growing up. I played violin. I started piano when I was five um, and was already advanced on piano when, by the time I was age, um, age 12. Um, so I can read an orchestral score. It's difficult. Um, it's, you also have to be able to understand Italian. Um, when I'm finished with, you know, as I'm doing my tracks, actually, I go down and I sing um, these singers' parts. Um, like this is um, Dr. Caius over here. I sing the parts to make sure that all of my tracks are singable. Um, I put in breaths where the singers need them. I put in the dynamics so the singers can actually hear where their parts are. Um, so that they can hear the beats. So, um... All the dynamics are in there, but I, I do go through and sing these. So you have to have an extensive no knowledge of singing, of um, all the languages that are that operas are in. Um, you've got to be able to read a score. So, for example, you have to know un poco meno, uh, meno animato. That means a little bit less animated. You have to know what all of that means. And also that traditionally sometimes there are retardandos um, or s places where it's sped up that um, are not in the orchestral score. You have to be able to read, for example, ben legato, that means well um, well legato, very smooth and connected there. So, um, whew, that's all I have to do for the tracks and that's why it takes me so darn long to do all of this and why it takes me a year. You can see, um, as I said earlier, 464 pages of this. Um, anyway, there you go. All right, I hope you enjoyed that and you're not too like overwhelmed um, by what I just showed you. Um, and that's our first lyrical log. Um, enjoy, have a great day, see you later.